All right, something interesting in Genesis verse chapter 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And it's interesting that Abraham was able to talk to God like a friend. And he's saying, look, it doesn't look like you're doing anything for me right now. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto, unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, referring to that dude, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto them, So shall thy seed be. And he believed the Lord, and he counted to him for righteousness. Remember, this is about 460 years before the law of Moses before the Ten Commandments. And it's interesting that Abram was considered righteous because he believed. There were some Israelites that did not believe when they were in the wilderness and their carcasses were spread throughout the wilderness. They were not able to enter into the Promised Land, including, which is interesting, Aaron, Miriam, and Moses, they were not able because of unbelief. Now, you might be saying, Shane, well, Moses believed in all this kind of stuff. Yes, he did, but he made a, a, a tactical error. God told him to speak to a rock, and Paul references to be a type of Christ, if you will. And the Israel was to get water which is an interesting study. If you study about the rock, it almost could appear that the rock was either following them or throughout their journey through the wilderness. I don't know if it was like a portable rock, but springs of water would come out of it. And this is how Israel was able to survive in the desert. And this is why, one of the reasons why they weren't attacked, I believe, is because... You need a water source within three days or your army is not going to survive. They're not even going to be able to fight. So if you're fighting someone and it's more than a three days journey and you don't have any, any way to store that water, your soldiers are going to drop like flies. You're going to run out of fuel, basically. It's very similar to uh, when you see the Battle of Midway or the Battle of Pearl Harbor. As soon as... Uh, aircraft carriers deploy their their fighters after those fighters are done they're they're fighting and they turn around they have to land and what was happening with the zeros during mid midway is when they're approaching the carriers they were running low on fuel and if they did not land they had to ditch their planes so if you're going to invade an army that's in or a nation that's in a desert you have to have enough supplies to do it. You just read The Art of War. A good general will know how to feed his soldiers. And if they are conquering, they must be able to eat the food as they conquer. If not, they're going to starve to death. So, wow, that was quite the tangent. Anyways, verse 7. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit. And he said... Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? So he's asking God again. He said unto him, Take me in heifer three years, and a she-goat three years, and a ram three years, old, and a turtle dove, and a pigeon. And he took unto him all these and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against the other. But the birds divided he not, obviously, because they're too small. You end up squishing them, tearing them up if you're cutting them up. When the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. Abram fell into a sleep, a deep sleep. So when the sun was going down, 
deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and a horror of great darkness fell on him. He said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be in a shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, meaning Egypt, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And so the nation whom they shall serve I will judge, and afterward they shall come out with great substance. Thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, and thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation, so one generation is basically a hundred years, they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And it came to pass, that's interesting that the Amorites' sin levels were not yet full to be judged. So God was giving them time to turn things around. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. Another interesting note is a smoking furnace basically was leading Israel through the wilderness by day and a burning light by night was also um, leading Israel in the nighttime. It's kind of interesting. So in the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying unto thy seed, I have given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites, the Canaanites, the Cadmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Raphim, which are giants, and the Amorites, which we just read, and the Canaanites, which were cursed, and the Girgashites, and the Jebusites. They, basically, the goal is to drive these nations out with hornets. Because if you, if you drive them out too fast, uh, what God was saying was, if, if, if I cause you to drive these nations out too fast, the animals are going to overpopulate the area, and we can't have that. So gradually, you're going to drive these nations out one at a time, slowly but surely, you're going to do it. And uh, obviously, if you follow my my ways and all this kind of stuff. So it's interesting. But the Girgashites made a deal, made a pact with Joshua, saying that uh, we're your neighbors and we heard about all your great deeds and all this kind of stuff. And uh, please uh, help us or, you know, make a peace treaty with us and all this stuff. And Joshua didn't consult anyone. And just made a deal with them, said, okay, we'll make a deal. We swear we will not, we will not fight you. Then the next day, of course, they found out that they were their neighbors, that they were the next in line to conquer. And they weren't able to it, so instead they made them tributaries, basically cutting wood and all this kind of stuff. So, and they agreed to it. So that's it for Genesis uh, chapter 15, something interesting. This is part of a daily devotion. Hopefully I can get through the whole book of Genesis just by doing this uh, one chapter at a time. I know it takes a little bit to do it, but really these some of these are short chapters. They don't take too long to read, you know, 30 verses kind of thing. Remember, you can get through the entire Bible two hours a day, seven days a week. You can get through the entire Bible in as little as 30 days. That's right, 30 days. So if you got something out of this, Feel free to subscribe, especially if you watch this this far. And feel free to leave a comment, uh, especially if there's something you're getting out of this. Let me know that as well in the comments. And I uh, hope you have a great day. See you in the next video. Bye for now.